Well, what's the crack, everybody? How are you getting on? Well, what's the story with you? Welcome to the Buckshot Podcast, episode 188 for Friday the... Fuck it, is it the 4th or 5th? I don't know. It's bank holiday weekend, apparently. I don't know what bank holiday weekends are like without the pubs. I don't know. I don't know. But if you're a Patreon, you would have gotten this last night, of course, and you would have gotten the video to go with today's... Uh, episode as well and ad free and all the, all the rest of it you know the crack welcome aboard of course to the new patrons fantastic to have you delighted to join the fucking party because the party's only getting wilder over there on patreon steady on tom keep your shirt on tom ramble pods as i told you last week if you weren't listening if you skipped over or you didn't hear it or it's your first time listening to this podcast my midweek ramble pods uh we got to episode one two three 123 so I figured it was a good time to bow out and send them straight over to Patreon. Uh, so from next week on, 124 onwards, will be purely, exclusively, and only on Patreon. I think those three words all pretty much just mean the same thing, but you, you, you get the message, you know what I mean? Also, this Sunday night, uh, Sunday 9pm, so it is, what is it, Sunday the, okay, I'll tell Sunday the 6th, Sunday the 6th, 9pm, we will be doing uh, our drunkest ever for the patreons on a live royal ramble where we all sit in have a few drinkies swap stories back and forth it gets good and loosey-goosey because of course i don't record it so there's no evidence so if you need to absolutely rip into somebody or slag them off the fuck a place to do it or if you don't even want it if you don't want to chime in but you want to do something on a sunday night given that your line of duty is gone it's over it's done with join in you can sit in the back don't have to participate just chill and listen to some of the goofy stories. Have a drink. It'd be just like nothing. Listen to people in the pub. Going to the pub by yourself. Looking in over your newspaper and listening. So, Sunday night. That's where it's at. Of course, the Tom and Jerry show plows on. Like I told you, we will be heading through the six, the six episode barrier that we're normally doing. And we've gone into a new realm. We're going to do a couple of more. We'll continue on with the bonus episodes uh, where we have celebrity performers of different genres. We have a couple of sports ones and stuff coming up. We'll continue with that, and uh, yeah, plans are afoot for the next season already, so you know, go over, join the party over in the Tom and Jerry show if you've never listened to it, Tom, Tom and Jerry, you know, Jerry with a G, Jeremy Bride, August myself, get on board, it's a fucking right bit of crack, um, and like that, they're all released early to ad free over on the Patreon as well, so you know, it's, it's a fucking win-win, that's all the housey wousey work done. You know, the crack will follow me on all the usual platforms and everything else. Tom O'Mahony Comedy will find it. Just get on board. I put up weird shit. Stuff that makes me smile. And, uh, you know, keep you up to date with who's up in the podcast. What I'm doing with the podcast and all the rest. So, I'll tell you about the gigs as they get a bit closer. Because we do have gigs. But there's no point in talking about it at this minute. You know you know yourself. It's, it's what it is. Moving on to today's guest, uh, I met this chap for the first time, we we crossed paths a good few times online because we have a lot of mutual friends and he's a very funny fucker and you can recognise somebody who's working their whole life. But we crossed paths, finally we met during uh, the lift, like level two or three, uh, Mickey Bartlett was putting on a couple of gigs up in Belfast and we met at one of them and he's a fucking smashing, smashing man, very, very funny dark as hell but very very funny you may follow him already with some of his Sunday roasts and stuff like that it's absolutely fucking brilliant lads and a joy to hang out with so please sit back and relax for the mighty Vittorio Angelo you went swimming in a, a pond t- yes, in so, London fucking yes, hell so- I went to the very, very fancy area that is Hampstead Heath this morning. Lovely. Lovely. And, um, but it was weird. So my my girlfriend does it every so often. She'll cycle to Hampstead Heath and go to the ladies' pond. So there's a ladies' pond, <laughs> a men's pond, and there's a mixed pond. Wait, no. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa. You, you, are you, is that the <laughs> super woke pond? Is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the, that's, if anything goes. As long as you're white, it's okay. Oh, it's, yeah, of course. Yeah, of, well, it's just white people. It just goes without <laughs> saying. <laughs> um, but I don't have a bike at the minute. My last bike in London, I sat free when I was moving house. I didn't want it. But in London, you can just set bikes free. So I just left it on the street and sat in my bedroom <laughs> and just watched someone nick it. <laughs> 
you can only imagine so the cycles. weird the weird feeling of that sorry to take you off but you're watching somebody like is there is there a little bit of anger going oh you can't oh but go on yes, take it. Yeah, go yeah, on you can't I, yeah but i think what's funny is like because i want it to be taken like i don't want the bike anymore so like i'm aware that they're feel they probably if they're anyway decent feel some level of guilt right yeah for taking a bike because they're like oh i'm stealing this bike but I have the nice sensation of going, they feel guilty for no reason because <laughs> I don't want the bike. <laughs> yeah, there's some warped fucking three levels of, of weird shit going on. But I, yeah, I totally, get, yeah, I can, I can see the, the, sorry, go back to the pond. The, yes, the white so, people pond. So yeah, so Izzy cycles um, off, she cycles and then I don't have a bike. So I, I get on the, the train. And it's weird because you're going for this like early morning swim in a pond and you're like, yes, I'm, I'm being all like wholesome and mindful. I'm like looking after my mental health, like doing cold water swimming and all. But I just go like she's having a nice cycle there, but I'm just getting wound up with dickheads on the fucking train. A guy yeah. bumped into my foot and I was like, well, that's wiped away any good that the pond will <laughs> fucking do because I'm just furious now. <laughs> I'm fucking hell. That's my... A very aggressive alarm. A um, nuclear fallout center, yeah. I know. But we, so we go and we do it and it is lovely. Although, I like, say if I'm playing football, I can run and run and run for days and days and days. Yeah. Something about the muscles involved in swimming. I'm, f- I'm fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Like straight away. Like, like, like 15 meters and I'm like, okay, okay. This is, I'm fucked. So I go and it's good. Like it, it does feel really good. And I had, I had a bad, I had, a, it was okay, but it wasn't the best set I've ever had last night. Like it was just tricky. I was okay. Opening, right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was hard and it was far away. Like I traveled a long way to have like a uh, 10 minutes. And I was oh, like, fuck oh, yeah. It's just a ball. Like, um, and I left early cause I didn't think it was paid. And the promoter was like, Oh, I was going to give you a tenner. And I was like, just keep it. It's fine. It's For, fucking. Yeah. It's just fine. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, so like I, I'm I'm trying to get into this thing because since the 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 lockdown's been lifting in England, like I've been I've been gigging a lot again. But see, when it goes badly, I'm taking it so badly. Of course, yeah, yeah, of course. Because you're like a child now again. You're just newborn. Yeah. You're a newborn again. So you're going. Everybody loves me, don't you? You all yeah. love me. I've been thinking about this for a year and a half. You fucking love me. You love me. Oh. <laughs> Oh, daddy doesn't like me. Oh, it's rough. And yeah. so last night is, um, I really, in, I've really enjoyed it in the past, like a couple of years, I've started doing black gigs in London. Right. Where yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. pretty much an entirely black audience. And like, like yesterday, there was three white people in the audience of 40. And how does your honky head, because uh, I mean, you are fair white. Like. I am white, white, white. Yeah. Well, I, I go <laughs> on and I talk about it a lot because I, I talk about race a fair bit in, in my act and stuff. And like, and, I think it's because like in Belfast, like, you know, you've been like, there's stuff bubbling under the surface, like the yeah. stuff that makes Northern Ireland tick. Oh, but it, we yeah, talk it's... about it ad nauseum. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like to the point where it's a bit like, right, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But in London, uh, like white people are so scared to talk about race or anything like that. now. Because I arrived in London and went, oh, that's what makes hair tick. Yeah, so natural yeah, inclination yeah, yeah. was to go talk about that, talk about that, talk about that, talk. And white people go, no, no, you don't do that. You don't, you don't mention that that guy's black and that guy's Pakistani and that guy's this person. It's like you don't fucking talk about that. But then I started doing these black gigs, and it's class because the power dynamic is completely like flipped, and it's so. It's such an interesting thing to play with. Like I go on and go, I'm your token white for the evening, and then like just crack yeah, on of course. With um, but it, I found recently I've opened, a, so I'd done a lot and been kind of in the middle and I'd really enjoyed them and I'd done really well, but I've gone on first at a couple recently and I, there's something that I'm not quite addressing or something that I'm not quite like doing, like, it's just difficult because it's, it's like they're coming of to a black Of course. Show. It's just tricky. Of course. And then all of a sudden, fucking Dean Martin walks out there going, hey, you, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I can only imagine if I was to be, I did a few black clubs in the States, but mm. and he, again, I went on first. And the only way, I actually walked on backwards onto stage 
because I realized that I walked backwards on talking into the wings going, I fucking can't go on first. Still. <laughs> fucking people are going to hate me. Are you joking? Like, of course. Go- and they and they have every right and kept talking for a good minute into the wings to nobody. That's funny. And it, to- it, it, it absolutely pointed out the white elephant in the room and then turned around and went, look, I, I can only apologize about this situation. I was yeah. supposed to be crowbarred in the middle, get me yeah, in, get yeah, me yeah, out. Yeah. But I'm here for the next 20 minutes, guys. So, you know, and it was then they were like, oh, yeah, yeah. he gets it too. We he don't, knows. Yeah, he knows. It's almost like they want to just be like, does he know that he's white? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I found that very, I found that hilarious in London because, and it's, we'll get around to talk about your podcast as well, which is very aptly named, um, <laughs> No blacks, no Irish, because there there is a power. Because mm. what, what? Yes, we we are of Caucasian descent, but mm. there's there's a there's a deep rooted guilt in especially middle class English people, where and it, it it also applies to the colonies as well as the ones being right yeah, next door. Yeah, yeah. And I I remember I went up and there was a there was a black chap. He was very he was he was a good host, and we had good crack afterwards. But and he, was this in London? It was in it was in Shoreditch. It was um, the Comedy Cafe. And a chap brought me on stage and he oh, it was s- probably Jimmy James Jones. At the it, was, Cafe. it was. It yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. And uh, no, it wasn't Jimmy James. No, because I, later that week I was with him. It was somebody else. Junior Booker. No, somebody with quite a difficult name. <laughs> uh, but I was able to pronounce you know it. the ones. <laughs> no, but the thing was, because I went yeah, on stage, yeah. like try having a name like fucking O'Mahony. Like yeah, yeah, forget yeah. about it. <laughs> and a guy, he was, I remember he said to me, he's he was like, uh, so, am I saying it correctly? And I went, fair play to you for realizing that you're not. You're actually yeah. saying absolutely incorrectly. And I will kick the fucking hole off you if you announce, bring me on stage <laughs> saying it the way you just said. So this is how you'll say it. And phonetically, I talked him through it. And he went, oh, my honey. Oh, oh, God, I just said it. I went, good man. Now, and he goes up on stage, does a bit of crowd work, and then fucks it up. And he brings me on to some, oh, mahogany. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, I, fu- I fucked it up. I fucked it up. I went, you're fucking right you did. Before he even walked on stage. And, st- and he was about to walk back. I said, stay where you fucking are. Stay where you are. I said, now, your name into the microphone. And now, can everybody repeat that? And then I said, now, my name, O'Mahony. And you could see, like, 60 people or 70 people are going, um, uh, I said, you racist pack of fucking <laughs> bastards. And then had him. Had him then. And I just, and your man started laughing. He immediately got what I was playing at. Well, I, I thought I'd done that, like, something quite similar last night. Because I went on... And the DJ fucked up because something quite interesting about black shows is there's always a DJ. Cool. And yeah. it's quite interesting. And I always want to do that. Um, oh, I know the bit you're going to say. The Bernie what? Mac. Oh. Where he's like, kick it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just scared him, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> the best fucking bit. I, nobody That's knows what was going on in that the whole set, but nobody knows what was happening. But the best set that probably has ever been filmed ever. Yeah. Yeah, ridiculous. So, I, so I go on, and the DJ fucked it up. He like didn't come in in time. He didn't have something queued up. So I go on, and it gets like just the intro hadn't gone well. The MC just like something about the way he brought like like just a few people clapped, and I grabbed the mic and went. I felt racist. <laughs> 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 like you saw me and went, Ooh. <laughs> and then I, I went, and he didn't even play any fucking music. And then the DJ goes, oh, should we do it again? And I went, right, let's do it again. I put the microphone back in. I walk off stage. And then the host mustn't have been paying attention because he, like, freaked out. He was like, what happened? <laughs> what, like, what, what happened? What, what went on? And I was like, like, and that <laughs> put this really mad tension into the room <laughs> where everyone was like, oh, my God, no one knows what's happening. And I was like, just play the most aggressive hip hop you have. And <laughs> I walked off. <laughs> And walked back on because apparently it's it's a funny thing. Apparently Bill Burr, if you've heard him talking about when he used to do black shows, he used to say that to them before he went on. He would say to the DJ, "He would go the most aggressive hip hop really? you have, put it on." And he would walk on, and when he grabbed the mic, he went, "All right, all right, yeah, <laughs> it's like, enough, nah, it's, it's enough." enough. Nah. <laughs> but I went on, and it was all it, it was all right. It, it it was just fucking tricky. But, um, and when did you like when did gigs start happening again officially so a couple mondays ago uh, oh, was that all all oh, right sure you're rusty I mean, as fuck so if that's the case Should, I've also done, you know i think i've done 10 gigs now since we've been back 
Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, also, I mean, you know yourself, by the time you've 110 done, you'll go, oh, thank God, we're back. Yeah, we're back. Yes, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, just... I'll just be like, oh. I've had moments. I've had moments of being yeah. like, oh, we, are we? And then the next night I'm like, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, of course. Standard practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have you, like, is that a, have you been concentrating on your, I'd imagine it's a very London thing to be heavily concentrating on your me- mental health, like, and mindfulness and going to lakes and, well, I, th- I, th- I think so. I think because I'm trying to, like, I got so bad. So when I was a kid, right, I had really, really bad anxiety, like okay. really, really bad. So like I was agoraphobic, like couldn't make it out of the house, missed months and months of primary school, punched my primary school principal in the face. Cause I was trying to run away for it. Cause I was having an anxiety attack. I cracked there. I was really like, tall that, child. Oh, yeah. Take that Mrs. McCacken. <laughs> <laughs> With that kind of a name, man, you're going to, you're in for a rough ride in a regard. Just like, so I, I'd, I'd had this thing that that was when I was nine or 10 and then moving through, I think I just like learned how to just like in that very man way, just talk. Everything oh yeah. Just absolutely. Keep it down, Ran right, that down. Side, and it was just like, see you later. And then it got to the stage over the pandemic where my jaw stopped working uh-huh. because I was so emotionally <laughs> repressed. Like I, I contacted the GP and they were like, <laughs> I was like, my jaw's not working. They were like therapy. And I was like, what's going on there? Like I couldn't open or close my jaw. No, no, nobody all. tests you for possible blood poisoning because that's one of the signs of blood poisoning. <laughs> Tetanus, your jaw I'm, locks up. I'm not a Russian spy. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, all right. <laughs> Somebody spraying all your door handles because you fucking give away all those files. But anyway, so, so I, I, I started, I went to NHS group therapy um, and I rock up and it's me and nine women because of course it's me and nine. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and of it's course. on Zoom as because it was during lockdown and i went on and i was really proud of myself the the first couple of weeks i went on and because i'm like making content and all i had my ring light on for therapy but it like <laughs> it, of didn't, course. it didn't feel very appropriate so no. like, like the therapist was it's like wonder you didn't have a fucking intro and everything just <laughs> I had my wee soundboard. I had like rounds of applause going do 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 do. <laughs> but the, the, yeah, the therapist was just like, "Well, you look good." And I was like, "I'm not feeling." The... So I eventually got that turned off. But it was weird. It was like me and nine women. The next week was me and five women, and then the next week was me and one woman, and just the th- so two of us and the therapist. And so what? The like, others thought they were cured after one night, or they were just like, "Ah, fuck this." Well, I think. I might have spooked them. <laughs> it's just like the ponds. You were supposed to be in the men's group. <laughs> now rocking in for controlling for women. And hey, hey, girls, how's it going? You all feeling a bit vulnerable, are we? <laughs> I th- well, I also think it was a bit like, they were like, yeah, I've got these deadlines at work. And I was like, well, I have to perform in front of hundreds of people. And it's really difficult. And I think they all went, yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> fuck it. But I don't know what it was. It was like, I just thought if I keep telling horrible stories maybe i'll get one-on-one therapy for free on the nhs <laughs> so i went and did that and it was all right it wasn't really like the topic that i needed and it's a bit fucking broad on the old and though like the woman just she was like too too supportive and because like like male stand-up comedians like at, like the most serious conversation still has like joke rhythm to it of course, you know of I mean? course, yeah. It goes yeah, like, yeah. and sure, I was just pushing it all down, and then my jaw stopped working, <laughs> and no, I was but, like, bah, yeah. bah, bah, bah. and then she was like, "Yeah, that sounds really hard," and I was like, "No, <laughs> that's not what I want." It's not to what happen. I need. Christ <laughs> Almighty, woman. Um, so I was kind of using it as a fucking gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, standard. Pro- yes, yeah, standard. But I'm just trying to get out of this, like taking like bad sets so horribly. And I think I've always found like my mom goes like swimming in the sea all the time. And like anytime I went with her, it's just like control out delete for your brain. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah you come out, yeah. you're like, okay, like what's next? Because that, so that moment horribleness where it's fucking cold too. Like, like if you, oh. I, I don't know how you'd sort yourself out in Hawaii, you know, like, oh, this is nice <laughs> all the fucking time. Like. <laughs> 
Jesus, could we get a volcano going, please, for some fucking terror, please? That was my my mate Aiden in school. I remember in business studies, they were like, right, if you were to set up a business, what would it be? And he gets up in front of the whole class and goes, I'm going to move to Puerto Rico and sell ice because it's so hot. Genius. That's a, <laughs> that kid needs to be fostered immediately, thinking of things like that like in fucking school. It's normally He's just like, going to be basic sit. supply and demand. <laughs> simple. Absolutely fucking simple. Genius. Probably a millionaire right now. Yeah. I think he dropped out of a philosophy degree. Okay. So he went wrong. So he went down a road that he shouldn't have gone. I get it. I get it. It happens to the best of us. Christ almighty. Oh man. And does it work then? Like you find yourself, have you found the jaw and the anxiety fucking freeing up then as a result of that? Yeah. Um, like after today from the swim and the yoga, much, much better. Like, like the jaw even is much better. And like I've got loads of stuff that I want to try that people have told me to try. Like, like I'm supposed to be doing this like Wim Hof breathing. Oh I yeah. Don't, I don't really know what it is, but it's like my mate had a jaw click and she was like, yeah, yeah, it's gone from doing this meditation and Wim Hof stuff for like a month. And I was yeah. like, fucking hell. My wife is getting into the, into the breathing thing. She was, she's reading a book at the minute and it's like that. It's, it's literally called breathe or something like that. But mm. she swears by it. Like just in oxygenate more, I'd say a lot of it is oxygenating your brain too. Yeah. You know, like it's what, rather than just sitting there with a mantra or whatever, you're heavily oxygenating. Cause there's, there's a crowd here in Tipperary. I've only just moved back and, uh, yeah, the stress levels gone out the window. Mm. They, they do not operate at the same speed around here. Like mm. I was in a hardware shop this morning and it, it, they're actually typically horrible fucking places to go because they're just so yeah. rude. But this yeah. particular one and they, it was like, put a coffee machine in here, lads. Nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> Everybody was just <laughs> lovely, just really lovely. Like was, That's mad because normally it, you go, there's no, there's. There's no more emasculating experience than going into yeah. a hardware shop. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, I thought I was a man. But all that. There's... I was, Can I have that kind of screw? And they go, oh. <laughs> and they take... Well, that's the, that's the, that is the power for the course. And I would, to be fair, I know a lot about construction, but there's, I don't go in there pretending I know everything. Mm-hmm. Else, but this one particular one, it was absolute. You're like, it, and immediately, then I met the boss. Mm. And you could see, oh, this is why you're all fucking lovely. Yeah. Like helping out everywhere. You know, is there anything? Oh, let me see a suggestion. And even I had to go down to the yard and like these fellas just couldn't fucking help you out. any. But it was the pace is what I've noticed. Yes. Is that nobody did. Like there's no, and I've talked about this in the podcast before. And it was one of the first weeks we were here. I'll never forget. I, I rang with my Dublin head on because I've been living in Dublin for years, yeah. rang up for looking for oil, ordering oil. Hi, yes, I'd like to order. Now, this was in my head, which a man answered the phone like this in a business. Well, <laughs> <laughs> disarmed that. me immediately. Like, and I says, uh, hey, uh, fuck, uh, Jesus, I had all this ready to say it very exact. <laughs> and I went through it and, at the, and he's, I gave, I will I give you my address? And he went, I should have answered. <laughs> and I gave him the address, the fucking postcode, everything. He went, now, tell me where you are. I was like, what? No, no, like whose house are you near? Where? where? So I then had to then describe it. He just wrote it down for the shits and giggles. He That's just so went through. Funny. And he was just, all he was doing was placating me because he was like, you should have just told me you're up the road from your mother's place. I would have found it. Yeah, because he's he, driving the van. Yeah, <laughs> like. He's the guy on the phone and he's delivering it to you. You'll see him later. And that was the amazing thing. It was like. And when, when do you think, because it's pretty low, when do you think, Era? Sure, he'll get out when he gets out to you. <laughs> I know that was a fuck you kind of relax, princess. It'll be there. Yeah. Don't fuck. And literally 40 minutes later, some giant tapped on the back window. That's full now. He let himself <laughs> in, backed in a truck. I didn't even hear it or see it. <laughs> Filled it up and fucked it. Look, look, and gone. But you need that. Oh, it's fucking lovely. The way, they're, the way they all operate. There's nobody is they're just a rush is not on you and the amount of people yeah. leaning on counters having a good old fucking natter because there's no i should where, where are you going in such a hurry because nothing is like it's not driven by money in rural yeah. ireland and that's where the core yeah. of it all is everybody's in a hurry because money is driving everybody not so much not so much people are leaning on gates leaning on counters leaning on petrol pumps that's right and i notice everybody's like there's just some greater sense of chill that I've never come with. It's years since I, I came across it. 
because I, I, tr- it, I try my best to have that in London. But in London, just, in lo- just, like you said that, like you, the end of that sentence tells us everything we need to know. Like you're never going like, to find it in London. Like we've just moved into this flat and we've got a balcony that overlooks a canal and there's a park on the Lovely. other side of the canal. And it's as, as picturesque and like, like as chilled out as you could ever expect and quiet as you could expect a London flat to be. But see, just as soon as you get on the tube, there you, you go. just get caught up in the moment. And I recently, right, see, since it's been hot as well, if the tube takes 40 minutes and the bus takes an hour and 20, I'll go, fuck it, I'll get the bus. Really? Because it- it's just like, I don't have to change from this one to that one. I just sit down on the bus, I put some music in. And have nothing to worry about. No sweaty balls rubbing against you or anything like that. And yeah. this is the thing. I think when you're in a busy city, you have to like do a lot of hard work and preparation to carve out that space to be relaxed. Like leave dead early for everything. Yes. Yeah. Be be fine with being early to everything you ever do, just because you'd rather not sprint from one train to the other and do all this fucking shit. So there is, yeah, there is extra leg work to have to do. And that's why when you when you see these places like this morning, lads leaning on the counters talking about sports and just talking about life in general. There was one, two blokes that were having a real deep chat. Just <laughs> really deep. That. And I was like, that's fucking cool. Do you know, but it, again, and it was funny because I was, I, I'm kind of building, a, I have a bit of a building project on at the minute. I was mm-hmm. using a pickaxe the last few right. days, you know, and fucking shoulders are killing me from the yeah, thing. Yeah, but I was, it just kind of dawned on me when, so this is what the gym is. It's just for yeah. this. It's for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could we not just open fucking pickaxe and wheelbarrow classes and people would be way fitter in no time, like, and just actually building a project because... And doing something? Doing solving something. solving the housing crisis? Are yeah, like, you know I mean? <laughs> literally, like, fuck the gym. Because the gym, like, you get, there is no end. It's like a fucking hamster on a wheel. There is no end to the gym. Do you yeah, know, it, it freaks me out, man. See people that run by themselves, go to the gym by themselves, and they're just yeah. like, this is what I do. I'm like... I can't turn that switch in my brain. Like no. I need, I need there to be a team and a ball and a something. And yeah, a, like... yeah, yeah. Like you can It's 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 been described by many of people, but it's it rings in my head. Like I cannot. I I used to go to the gym a lot as a result for the purpose of playing rugby, so I wouldn't yeah. get overly hurt. Yeah. But as soon as rugby stopped, it's like I can't train to train. For yes, training, I'm no... <laughs> just I'm not training for training. Saying fuck there's off, there's I can't one. do this. Like, yeah, I had one. I had one mad summer at like under 15s rugby, where they gave us like a preseason training thing, and I was one of the smallest guys in the team. And I was like, I'm gonna absolutely fucking hammer this, and just did it every day. Sprints in the garden, press up, squat, like just body weight stuff, but just like absolutely like in my garden every day. And then I like kind of broke into the team that summer, and I was like, fucking class. And then, like, went the way to uni, and I was like, "Oh, you, like, I'm thinking about joining this gym. Do you want to join this gym?" And I was like, "No, why? why? Like, yeah, what? I get it. What? What for? Well, especially after what I'm after seeing after the last few weeks of physical labor, it's like, oh, this is what we should actually be doing. Like, you know, and like, there's they talk about like the farmers walk." I've been doing the farmer's walk with a fucking wheelbarrow. <laughs> they would pay for this shit. Like, it's like, it's like I could fucking put a hundred people to work around here. Especially these days, they've got the fucking battle ropes and they've got yeah. the hammer and the tire and all because they're all like, it's all like CrossFit, rugged, blah, 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 blah. Just because you're in a warehouse, like, just wonder. Go. I wonder, could we, could we, because there's all, you know, there's always a new fad. There's always a new thing. Like, is this going to be, could we, could we just set up a construction company based around, <laughs> purely bringing just in members <laughs> people who want to just come just come do an hour of laying the blocks your forearms will fucking thank you for it you know what i mean just shouting at I, them and everything i got this perspective like because i grew up like very middle class in belfast but my parents very cleverly like always made a point of like making us me and my brothers do activities that weren't like just classic catholic middle class activities like right like we did play ga and stuff but we also played rugby. We also went to scouts and like through rugby, like I went to this like dead working class rugby club in East Belfast and I was in there and one of them was like, Oh, my dad's given me 50 quid every A I get in my G. Oh, every C I get in my GCSEs. 
And I was like, I turned to my dad and I was like, can I get that? And he was like, no, because you're going to get like nine A's. <laughs> like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> like, I can't afford that. And it was just different because they were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to start an apprenticeship next year. I'm going to yeah, be, yeah, yeah. be that, I'm going to be that. And it was just such an interest. Like, I remember it when I was like 12 or 13 going, oh, right. That's like, because my school was just like, are you doing medicine, dentistry or law? Right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? Like, what? I never really got that focus. And like, just through that, like, I remember when I was 12, 13 going, yeah, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor. But it was just because I was a bit smart at school. So I'd been told that's what you do. Yeah. When you're yeah. a bit smart at school. And then like, looking back, I remember there was a moment I said to my dad, I was like, can I go do an apprenticeship? I really hate being in school. Like I absolutely hate it every minute of it. Like, and it's not school's fault. Like it just doesn't click with me. Yeah. And he was like, do you want your hands to bleed every day for pretty much a year? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a valid point. He said, like, I, you know, I went to a technical school. So it was, it was, yeah. it was primed around either. If you were going to go to college, you were going to either go into most likely pharmacology or construction. <laughs> That yeah. was it. Now, but they had set it up. They, it was very well set up for people who wanted to go into trades too. Mm -hmm. But like I met lads when we were in college, lads that we went, I went to school with, you know, they'd come in and visit us in college, mm -hmm. maybe on a Thursday night or whatever. And they'd finished their apprenticeship. They left school at 16. They were driving like a brand new fucking Range Rover. And you're this going, is my what the fuck right? am I doing? You're 20, I'm... you're 20 years of age and you own two houses. And what I'm am I doing? To, I'm trying to write some material about this. I was like, I'm very middle class, but all of my working class friends have more money than me. And it's because there's a middle class thing of like, like it is an entitlement of just like hard work. No, 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 no. Like of course. I'm, de I'm destined for something much more thinky than that. <laughs> and thinky, thinky don't pay the big bucks these exactly. days. It fucking doesn't. <laughs> I remember one of the guys in my rugby team he was called Glenn and he, he was similar to you were saying like had done his apprenticeship and was like starting working as a plumber and like set up his own business when he was 20 and like yeah. was running his own plumbing company and we used to take the piss out of him we used to call him like a tech victim or like just like like take the piss out of him for being from like a mad area of Belfast and he just turned around like his, his comeback was always what are you going to do when your pipes burst and I was like fucking I'll yeah. phone you, mate. Like, I'll, like, I have no yeah. other option. Like, I'll just phone you. Oh, listen, I, I fucking talk. I've only speak with an electric. When electricians would be the, you know, they're the Merlin. They're the wizards mm. of the whole thing. So they tend yeah. to have a, but, and I would advise any, any kid, if you're going to do something, be an electrician. It doesn't hurt that much. It doesn't really hurt. It, you'll get some of the rough work early doors, but realistically, once, thing, you, right? once you get a bit handy, like to earn, Two, three thousand a week is not weird for these guys. Yeah. Do you know? You're like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> and then you like you shake hands with an electrician and it's like it's like rougher than shaking hands with me, but it's not too bad. You shake hands with like a bricklayer or a joint. Oh, forget about it. And yeah, it's yeah. like high five in a wall. But like looking back, like what like what's I think there's just this focus on uni. Like everyone has to go to uni now. I was driven, it was, it was governments just were, it was driven, especially when I was growing up, um, it would have been like early 2000s when I was leaving school and they were just, the whole country was going fucking crazy. They needed pharma and they needed, and it was just being piped down to the schools. Mm. Send them, we need pharma, we need construction. So mm. that was at the time we need technical construction because don't worry as far as labor goes and trades, if we don't have enough of them, we'll bring them in from abroad. Yeah. But we want to, we want our sites run by, and that was, it was, it was a directive coming down to schools, yeah. you know? And the more I thought about it, I was like, well, you know, I kind of wouldn't have mind doing something, but I was glad I did, you know, went into civil mm -hmm. engineering for a finish, but it is handy to have had it. But at the same time, I didn't, I just went along with the wave. It was like, all oh, right, here we are. And then college was good crack because a lot of the boys were there and stuff and yeah. played really all it was rugby, like, you know, and just drink it. So that was it really, yeah. but. Well, I had a weird one. So I studied as a classical musician that was my yes i remember you telling me this when we met yeah 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 tell me more so i was kind of going through school and i decided like i didn't want to you have I a great name for classical like tomo tomo manny will never never be 
top of the world when it comes to Although, I don't one of the best um musicians I've ever seen. God, what's his last name? He's from Kilkenny and he's by far the best violinist I've ever heard in my entire life. Like classical violin. Really? Like studies and plays with like Maxim Vengerov, who is like one of the greatest violinists of all time. And it's just like, but his name's like Patty something. Like it's it's, it's just so, a normal name. Like, it's yeah, like yeah. dead, very, very Kilkenny. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's, it's very, very funny. Um, and I love that as well. Like, cause, cause he's just so normal. Yeah. And yeah, I've yeah. met so many mad violin students who are like, yeah, practice eight hours a day, eight, eight hours a day. And they just in a room by themselves, just, and so, so anyway, so I was in school, I'd kind of given up on the idea of studying medicine or anything like that. I was just like, it just, it just seems like a lot of that book stuff that I really don't get on with. I think he's still, yeah. And then I met a guy who was a trombone player oh. and he'd gone off to music college and, and he said to me, yeah, I was just playing Christmas carols in a shopping center once. <laughs> and I thought, geez, do you reckon there's a way to get paid for this? <laughs> and somebody went, yeah, yeah, you go to music college. And he was like, what's that? And they're like, you go and you study your instrument for four years and then you come out and you start to play with orchestras and you do this. And he was like, that sounds class. <laughs> so he just went and did it. And he's a brilliant trombone player. But it was a similar thing. And you need two E's at A level to get in like it's all just based on the audition okay right yeah yeah so i was playing like i was playing percussion like i started on drum kit and then built in like percussion which is like xylophone and like timpani and all that stuff um and it was just that kind of thing of like well i do want to go to uni i do want to go and do something after i leave kind of the end of school at 18 um and I had quite a notion to go to England or Scotland or somewhere and just like, just be some somewhere else and just see yeah. what the crack is. Um, and I was like, well, I quite, I quite like when I'm playing percussion in the, in the youth orchestra, like look, like eat just also youth orchestra. I was like, that's good crack. Yeah. And so I just, I just auditioned. And I remember the, the careers person in school was like, would you not apply to uni like normal unis just in case you don't get in? the music college and i was like well are you telling everyone else to apply to music college just in case no you're not <laughs> so you can fuck off and they like phoned my mom and all and they were like you do know really like, yeah, yeah they're like you do know he's throwing his life <laughs> <laughs> you know he's not doing medicine or law you know that and i was like shut up like um so i go over and i audition and like i was very much like didn't like i didn't all the english like applicants like knew the people on the panel. So oh, stop. Like, right. Like, Hello, like, Gordon. Well, youth orchestra, they just like blah, blah, blah. And they were like, they're like, like I went in and there was like a group bit of the audition and I was like, oh, Tristan, hello. And I was like, uh, well, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then I, 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 I got in fucking somehow. And then I had an offer for Royal Northern, which is in Manchester. And then an offer for Guildhall, which is in London. And I, I was very much like, uh, and then just picked Guildhall because I think somebody told me to pick it and it was the, one of the best decisions I've ever made because Guildhall, I didn't even know this at the time is also a really top drama scope alright so I went over and in Freshers Week I, like, I just assumed it was a music college so I was like what do you play and they were like I'm a technical theatre student and I was like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> and techies because you've done theatre work before yeah Techies make me laugh so much. I just, I used to call them gay builders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They wear the stickers, but they're always spotless. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they're all going about in steel toe cap boots, but they're talking about like fuchsia lighting and all. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're like work, you're like trades people, but you're not like no, people. No. I also used to say they're like football referees. Like they're the football referees of the theater world because it's like they want to be involved, but in none of the cool way. <laughs> <laughs> and they really like wearing black. Yeah, yeah, they love yeah. it. They're, like, they're yeah. like, this is my color. Um, so I went over and then like discovered like theater, like went to watch theater and was like, fucking hell, that's class. And then I kind of saw what like being an orchestral musician looked like. And I was like they don't seem very happy no crack 
Yeah, they yeah. seen they they drank a lot of pints. Like not a lot of people know this, but like, see if you ever go see a West End show or anything like that, everyone in the pit is absolutely razzed. Go away. Like, because you have to understand, they play it nine times a week, the exact same show. Yeah. Like they have, they're reading books, they're watching football on the stand while they're playing it. They could do it in their fucking. <laughs> I never ever even considered that. That's. <laughs> It's mad. Like, so in the one of the, the highest paid orchestra in the UK is the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden in London. Right. Um, and they're in the pit, so you can't see them. They're underneath the stage. Audience can't see them. So on all the parts, particularly in the brass and percussion, because they're towards the back and they're a bit more of the fucking lads of the orchestra. Although I always found it dead funny, like, because music college is essentially the dorks of all the schools of the UK. <laughs> Didn't want to say it. But yeah. they, they all come together <laughs> into this one building. I mean, it's band camp. It's band but, camp. But it is that for four years. But what's bizarre about it is like, like they've all been bullied. Like, like everyone at music college has been bullied. <laughs> but people just sort themselves into these hierarchies. So you get fucking bassoon players pretending they're alpha males. And it just made me laugh so much because I played sport. Like I was... Like most of them were just like, I do music, I do music, but yeah. I'd had like quite a varied like like childhood. And I just I was just looking at these like posh English people who are bassoon players, like bullying other people. And of I course. was like, that's fucking mad. Like, who do you but think people people regardless and you this is a thing I've been people are there always would be a propensity to be terrible people. Regardless yeah. of the environment, there will always yeah. be a couple of cons. And I go, and I know people say, "Oh, but you know, we're the the downtrodden." No, nope, trust me, put you all in the tank together, and I guarantee you, you'll, you'll find the wankers will step step out, and that's regards male or female, yeah. that will that will happen regardless across the board. But at the so at the opera house at the back, like on the French horn parts, trombone parts, particularly the percussion parts, in the like big chunks of rests they have where they're not playing, it will say two and a half pints. On like written in pencil <laughs> on the music, at the timing that you've got, because they know that they can nip out the back across the road to the pub, have two and a half pints. But it's even more than that. The guy who's a <laughs> percussionist, I know a guy who's a percussionist in an in an opera orchestra. So they play for operas and ballets, and some of them are like five six hours long, right? And you play in the overture because the overture is like all the themes of the of the bit that comes later, and then it starts into the opera. So the percussion will generally play in the overture. And then he's been for dinner. Like he, <laughs> he's, he's been to see a movie and come back and not missed a note. <laughs> and just like walks in and goes, where are we? Okay. And just cracks on. And it's such a weird detachment from, because it's funny that like there's people in the audience like crying their eyes out going, this is so beautiful. And the guys are like pure trying to tickle each other while they're playing the difficult bits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can, but you can see it. You can see because there is a, 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 the monotony to it would drive you fucking round at end. All right. Like, because yeah, you have to make it fun. You fucking have to. And it, the, so swing it back then, like, with, with, so Vittorio, you're of Italian descent. Yes, my dad's Italian. He grew up in Belfast as well, but he um, both of his parents are Italian. Um, Aha! So, and yeah, had, my mum's just from Belfast. And what was the what was the attitude then when you said I'm actually going into music? Uh, good looking, thanks. <laughs> were they okay with it? They were. That my parents have always been dead supportive of everything, which has been so good, and probably has caused me to be quite indecisive and do a lot of <laughs> stupid things. Sometimes you need a bit of that strictness. I get you, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was very much just like you, like very like when that careers teacher phoned, they were like, "Shut up," <laughs> and just like cracked on, and it, and it was great. I mean, I remember. Like when I was first auditioning, and they were like, "Oh, would you not leave it a year, like work a bit?" Because like it, it was just very unknown. Like, because yeah, of course, really Christ Almighty, who's going to do that? Um, but I was like, "No, I think I can do this." It, I think it was just because the audition process was quite expensive. It's like you have to pay to audition to these places, like registration fees and all that crap. It's really, fucking, it's crazy. Like, really, like you pay the one I went to, a hundred quid to audition, and they have they have fee waivers for like 
like people from low income backgrounds. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, the problem is like I always say, they try and solve all these problems at the age of eighteen, but people from low income backgrounds most of the time won't have a fucking clue what music college even <laughs> never mind applying to it so they just have this like pot of money and they go jesus no one's using that this year and they go here i wonder why because you do no outreach yes of course but they must but be as, in class yeah, yeah they must be cool as a breeze because during lockdown then in back in belfast you put on gigs in the backyard like yeah. that's fucking brilliant and it, do you know what it was it came from my like anxiety stuff it was because like as soon as lockdown hit, I went up to, to the north of England with my girlfriend, kind of camped out there for because we were like, we're just bailing out of London before yeah, you can't. Because you didn't know what was going to happen. No. Nope. You were just like, okay, I don't want to be in a big city. <laughs> so I just fucked away off. Um, and then I made it back eventually on a ferry back to Belfast. And um, and I, I just, I, I think what it was is like a lot of my irrational thoughts when I was nine or 10, when I was dead scared to go outside was like, okay, uh, going outside is scary. Being around large groups of people is scary. And yeah. I spent a lot of time learning that those thoughts were irrational. Yes. And then the government went, <laughs> <laughs> don't go outside and avoid large groups of people. And my wee evil part of my brain went, I fucking told you. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I fucking told you. So I stayed inside like i would leave the house twice a week to walk the dog and i said the mom and dad i was like like i I can't do the shopping i can't like i will do extra stuff around the house but i just can't go do that just now and then i was aware that that wasn't sustainable and it was like a bit stupid but i was just so fucking like fearful of the whole thing and it was never it was never a concern that i was gonna get covid it was Jeez, if I give it to someone and then I know, yeah, die. yeah, yeah. That was I think that was a lot of the worry for a lot of people. Yeah. Was like, yeah. sure, if I get it, that's no worry. I'll but be if right. I, if yeah. I kill my auntie, yeah. Like I don't want like that'd be so like am I, like that would be horrible. But I so I was just very inside. And then my my mate, like just family friend in Belfast said, um, my wee sister Hannah was supposed to graduate this year and she's not getting a ceremony. So we're doing a wee one in the back garden. Right. We'll come round, we'll just like have a few people and it'll just be dead. Like, and a few of our mates are doing the same thing and we've got like fake diplomas to hand out. It's just very nice. And I was like, fuck yeah, that sounds grand. So I show up and it was in the garden and it was the first time I'd like seen anyone for a good <laughs> while. Yeah. And it wasn't very socially distanced. Like it was outside and everything, but like people were like, like hugging and all. And I was like, I started blacking out. Like my vision started like tunneling and all. (laughs) And I was just there. Like, and I ended up, I like, I took a seat somewhere. Like after they'd done the ceremony was lovely. And they had a wee stage, you know, which kind of was what inspired like building the wee stage in the garden. And, but then after it, everyone's sitting around, there was a wee gazebo. And I just sat down in one of the chairs and was just trying not to pass out. And then what happened was I was at a chair at the end of the gazebo and then gradually more people arrived to that table because I'm so fucking cool. Yeah. And so my chair just got slowly backed further and further into this gazebo. And then there was just loads and loads of people at the table and I was just in the corner of this gazebo just like, oh my God, I'm going to fucking die here. (laughs) (laughs) And then I came home and I said to mom, I was like, I nearly passed out there and she was like yeah I did spot you because me and mum were like get on really really well right and and I said dear do you think we could put on a, like a gig in our garden like w- with a stage kind of like that and all because if I don't get back into seeing people and doing stuff I'm legitimately concerned that I'll never be able to again yeah well you're right because you could go fucking wrong if you went beyond the point of rescue like that's the thing. I was yeah. like, I don't want to just become like it just like a fucking really insight. I was like, because I love stand up comedy. I love doing it. And I do love socializing with people like now that I'm back in the swing of it. But I was like, I need to make a kind of bold step here yeah. to make it happen. And kind of because of that, we I kind of had the idea, contacted Mickey Bartlett and Robbie McShane 
I was like, here, we'd just be up for coming and doing a gig in the garden. We'll just do a bucket. Yeah. And a whatever. And they were like, yeah, fucking of course. And then we did it. I can't remember any of the first gig. Because again, I was like black. I couldn't see when I went on stage. Jesus Christ. Like I grabbed the mic and I like my vision was like, <laughs> like tunneled. And I grabbed it and I went, I went what's your name? And the guy was like, what? And I was like, I'm having a panic attack. I can't do it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just but it's, it, what was really nice is my mate, Jamie, who'd worked in TV a bit. He was like, here, I saw Mark Norman's documentary about getting back to mini documentary about getting back to gigging. Um, could I come do one for your first gig back? And I went, fucking right you can't really? i was i was gonna film it all and it just would have been like a phone here or maybe a gopro whatever but he brought around like two big cameras there's five cameras and then a roaming one for like picking up all sorts of bit and like wee lapel mics and all ah, class. And yeah, so there's a mini doc on my youtube which is fucking unreal of like the setup for the day the gig a few clips of the stand-up which is nice because like, that's the only way I know what happened. Because you're, <laughs> you're fucking blind through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's class, like, and 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 the, the doc, I was super happy for Jamie. He They got, like, selected for some uh, film festivals and all. They submitted it to things, and they were like, yeah. Fucking right. So good. It's just a lovely wee um, documentary, but you can see... You can see me and like the wee interview bits. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, it's going great. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> Fucking wired on speed, yeah. Man, after the gig, particularly, I'm just like, oh, oh. <laughs> like, and it was class. And we did seven of them. We did seven. Did over you? Co- yeah, yeah, we did seven over the course of summer. And people were so generous with the, like, because we just did a bucket at the end and it was 30 people. But you had people going, because I have a wee card reader as well. You had people going, can I donate 100 pounds? Stop. And I was wow. Like, wow. And he's like, yeah, I haven't seen anything in months. That's amazing. And, I do, and then like got the comedians all paid well. Like I like chipped in. Like I, I said, the mom and dad, I was like, let's take a portion of it and like put it to something for the house. Cause it's our house. That's like, it's, it's their house that it's being fucking done. And like, so I got them, we bought like a nice like record player and we sound system for the living room after the seven gigs. Cause we just like consciously been like, this isn't all me, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's it's largely them. But yeah, I got the comedians paid. And look, I, so I, I paid the opener and the closer because I, I was like, I want people to be paid properly. Yeah. And I said to other people, I was like, I also understand that people want stage time. So if you want to come down and do a set, I can't pay everyone, but I'm more happy welcome. to give you the stage time because I am I know that's what people... It's the only show in town, wasn't it? Else. That was the fucking thing. Um, and it was great, man. It was so, so fun. And people were so, so nice. And the neighbors were lovely. The neighbors are now asking if we're doing it this summer. Really? Whereas we were dead stressed at the start. We were like, oh my God, is this going to be okay? Fucking hell. I mean, you might have to, you know, fucking I'm, set up. I'm doing it again. Are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, like I was talking to mum today about like I'm booking a gig in august in belfast for like a wee festival that's going on and i was like sure we'll tag a a socially distant social club as it was dubbed um we'll tag one on as well because it was just so fun and it was such a nice environment that's class it, yeah it looked the part tell me what am i what this what am i seeing what am i seeing when i see you hosting or presenting on online at the minute where you're wearing the, cool suits on the and the you're sofa, on the sofa right, right what right. what am i seeing so that was a job I got for an app. So they reached out to me. It's like a new startup app. Um, and they messaged me and were like, hi, we've seen your stuff online. We'd love to make, like, we're looking to make this topical comedy show, like weekly news roundup, kind of like Charlie Brooker, Newswipe type yeah. thing. Can you send us a pilot? Like an example using these news stories. Brilliant. Um, about five minutes long. And, and and let me know and, and and we'll kind of well we'll see what we think and i was like yeah fucking no worries so i got set up with a fucking ironing board for a desk and, a fucking, and set up like a it was it was just my phone here and then i re-recorded all the cutaways over here <laughs> like it was just one camera but it's me going da-da-da-da. um 
and they were like fucking great come down do it um we'll do it weekly and it like it it, it stopped now like and, and it didn't it didn't work out um with them because i think they're just so new like it was quite i think it was quite a bold marketing strategy to go straight into yeah. uh, like making content rather than just ads for their app because they're really really like just like only like a year old or something um, okay right yeah yeah so it was like it was a bit of a swing we did it for a few weeks and it was really fun man and like and it was so it was looked brilliant like man, and see you, but you're a natural at it like it was oh it, thank you it man, came I, across it, really 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 well I felt like. like it took me a, like a couple of episodes to get into like how to be on camera properly of course stuff. But yeah see, mate, see writing i had to write seven minutes of topical material every week and i was that's, like this is this is a fucking shift like yeah that would normally be done by a few people that's get, what I, you know? I, I said to them as well. I was like, right, you know you're paying me to, the job, to do the job of a writer's room, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're fucking like, right, the cheeky horse, but, yeah. But you know what's good is like, I'm now going to put a lot of them together into like a show reel and go to someone like Absolutely, Charlie Brooker's yeah. producers and have I got news for you and mock the week and go, here, very few people can fucking do this yeah. on their own. And it's a great show reel to have because it looks the business too. That's like. the thing. Proper setup, proper cameras. And they've said to me that I can still use the studio because they they were they were dead pleased with the stuff I'd made. Um so like obviously they they were doing a lot of the editing, but I'm just trying to work out what I'd like to because I might do something similar. Like I I don't do topical stuff on stage that much because I prefer like Talk, like do you know like opening up a vein a bit more like ah yeah being, yeah yeah you know, this is fucking you don't want in to go a lot of the ways, this week blah 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 yeah in a lot of ways i think i fucking hate when co- comedians take that to stage to stand up because stand up is more like that's kind of sacrilege like one should it's more personal do you yeah know I mean? one shouldn't be and do you know what's gas about what went on this week you're like oh yeah. well fuck i'm going to the toilet thanks very much you know I'm what i used to do was like i would occasionally come up with a topical joke and i would just do it like three times at gigs just like to open up or whatever and get a clip of it and fuck it online because they do well online. But it was never what I wanted to do. Yeah. On yeah, stage. Yeah. It was never the bulk of the act. Um, And it's hard. Cause like, listen, you can have an individual, like if you see something news that sparks a conversation about something that's different, but just those kind of topical jokes, isn't it? But I feel like, it was so interesting because I'd spent the whole pandemic like banging my head against the wall, just making stuff, writing stuff, doing all these sketches and clips and all this stuff. And I, like just getting paid for none of it. Like just yep. being like, just yep. fuck it online, see what happens. And then it was so nice to have someone go here. We've seen what you've been doing. We'd love you to pay to do a bit more of it. And do you know what it was? It's like, cause I had been doing the Sunday roast on my Instagram. So I was going to get around to it in a minute. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, if for people that haven't seen it, I just basically cyber bully people. <laughs> but they uh, ask for it, or yeah, is it their they friends? Pay, they pay me. So, oh, right, fantastic. So what happens is on a Sunday, I post up, say the Sunday roast, so they can request for themselves or they can request for their friends. If they re- if they tag their friend in the comments, the friend has to like the comment. Okay. So that I know that they know it's coming. Great. Like. They know what's going on. It's a consensual roast. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I didn't know that at the start. I had a couple of bad ones. <laughs> I, yeah, because in fairness, bad. you swing hard. Like, I do. Yeah, but that's fuck, fuck going half, half hearted at it. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's interesting, like occasionally, like for a couple of weeks, like because it basically just goes into people's WhatsApp groups and people go, oh my God, like tag this person, tag this person you break into these like weird pockets of people all around. Like there was one week it was like very specifically, I could tell almost everyone that was requested and went to Glasgow school of art. <laughs> right. Cause it would have just gotten into a certain couple of friendship groups in there. And I went in, but now for whatever reason, I just seem to be like roasting the teenage population of mid Ulster. Like it's just, like, it's just like Tyrone teenagers. And I'm like, geez, when I book a tour, it'll be youth clubs in Balaki. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Fucking, because to it, once you find your tribe, as I, was, I talked with, I remember it was McCarney, I was like, once you find your tribe in Northern Ireland, they will, they will yeah. follow you to the fucking grave. Like, it's incredible. Once you yeah. find your tribe, you're off to the fucking races. Like, but it's interesting because I don't feel like, and I remember it was Rory Woods asked me this at a gig once when I was back, because I started stand up in London. Right. 
And I remember Woodsy said to me, when you come back, does it feel like a home gig? And I was like, do you know, not really. Because like when I'm in London, like everyone knows, like, like it's pretty like, like they get it. Like I'm the guy from Belfast. Like yeah. they understand my angle and my point of view on things. But because I've had that the whole way through from the start in London, I come back to Belfast and I can't be the fucking Belfast guy. Yeah. Because yeah, everyone's yeah. the Belfast guy. Everybody's the Belfast guy, yeah. So, and I've gigged bits and bobs in Belfast and the garden shows definitely helped to find out like what my, vo- like, what my voice is and what my, like, like what makes me different from... What's your angle? Like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what's my fucking thing? And... um but that took me a fucking while and, and I, I don't know if I've quite sussed it. I mean, I'm, I'm still quite fucking new to stand up in the grand scheme of things. So like, I'm still, I feel like I'm still trying to find like my actual like yeah. voice and my kind of take on everything. But like, but and I'm sure that fucking never stops. Do you know what I mean? You're like, you oh, never, never like, stops. I find it. This is me. <laughs> never stops. Like, I, I, I grew a mullet during this, and I'm like, yeah. I fucking love this thing. I, <laughs> and for the handful of gigs I got to do when when we got that lift in, in lockdown last summer, it was like, I noticed it was like, oh, it's it's become part of the situation. It's like, all right, well, I'm sure I'll cut it off at some stage, but for now, why fuck? You know. But it, it, again, it's just well, you're finding another thing. But I did, I found that. And I was, when I was going gigging in Belfast, it was very much, and here's token Southern guy, you know, because yes. yeah, you don't yeah, get yeah, much yeah. more Southern than me. Like, so I was like, yes. come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was no, I, I, there was also no point in me referencing it either because none of my references would make, because I may as well be from Cork, Mayo, fucking wherever. Rather yeah. than, so I, it was just straight comedy. But as a result of just continuously going back there, it was, like I see it now, uh, almost I would say forty percent of my listeners are in the north of Ireland. Yeah, and it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a funny thing. Do you know what I love is when you see a massive English comedian host their UK tour. Yeah, yeah, and they won't go fucking near it. Not to fucking home, <laughs> because because we've got our. Like the Northern Irish, you've got your hometown fans. heroes. That's all. Like, they have the guys. You're looking at two two lads that, like, you're looking at the likes of Geddes and Todd now as well, filling yeah. the fucking arenas. Yeah, arenas. Like, there is nobody on this island could do that. Nobody yeah. could do that. Like, and especially do it being from the fucking place because they say you know don't be a prophet in your own hometown. Like, I I can sell way more tickets in Belfast than I could here. Way more. It's so interesting. Way more. And, and look, like I, like Gaddis and Shane Todd and Mickey Bartlett and like they're, and McCann as well, like they're the reason I started doing stand up. Because I yeah. listened to their podcast and I'd seen them at Lavery's and I'd gone, fuck, that's class. Like, that's so good. And do you know what? It, I think it really, I think it sets me apart in some aspects in, in, of like work ethic over here because to do laveries every two weeks to a lot of the same people. Turnover. You have to write like fuck. Yeah. Whereas in London, people trot out the same five minutes for two, three, four years. Oh, Jesus. They're working on it, getting it tight for a competition. And I go, Jesus. Oh, what fuck. Are you doing? Like, yeah, what are you what? doing? That's the soul completely pulled out of fucking comedy. Like, if you're trying, just going, you're like, well, what are we doing now? Are we in a sport? What do we like? Yeah. Is when does it stop being any form of art? Like you know, but yeah, it's it was it, it's it's a very interesting place. The the whole Belfast vibe, and I can't explain it to anybody else, especially down here, because they don't mm. really get it. They're like, "How are you getting gigs up there?" It's like, "Well, I I get on with the lads, which is number one. Yeah. I'm sound and I show up on time, you know, and I'm not a pain in the fucking hole, like you know. And I can yeah. kind, I can I kind of point out the elephant in the room and that. There's no point in me trying to sell Tipperary Man because nobody, or nor is there me trying to. I've done it a few times. I remember it was, I, I think Mickey might have advised me, or just, we were just throwing it around where I would mention a place, a locale, you know, where mm. there's that whole bit of, bit of, bit of Lurgan, you know, there was yes. that whole yeah, thing yeah, with the blame yeah, yeah. game. And I felt dirty for doing it because I was like, yeah. I genuinely don't know. All I could actually do was tell, if I was, it was to be a, a joke or a story about something that actually happened to me in the area. Cause I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't start referencing how it's so funny that people have, 
one short leg in Oma. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't, you know, yeah. so after doing it the once or twice, and I got some laughs, but it's like, no, I didn't deserve it's, that. I, I didn't you, deserve you that. You feel that in, in Belfast, like it's just a crutch you can lean on. Oh, yeah. Go, like the acronyms. Yeah. Protestant. And it's yeah. like, like the like, amount, the yeah. amount of acronyms that I will get that are used, you know, you know, of different political acronyms. I've gone, I know none of these, yeah, and the, nor am I going to try. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Tell me, they, if I, I've taken up loads of your times. I'm sure you've yoga or you know <laughs> something I've awesome. Got kombucha to drink. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> kombucha to drink and just to center my chi before I punch, <laughs> put put my fist through the fucking wall. The um, so you were saying you're are you doing you have your podcast any greatly named that we we were talking about it stopped um so we stopped have you knocked it, it on the head completely or yeah, just the season or what it's it's we've knocked it on the head um just because um the co-host um mo who is still really good and you should like anyone listening should definitely check him out um he just had some stuff going on personally and i was like listen co-hosting a podcast never solved anyone's fucking problems yeah so we'll shelf this and it's, it seems like it's shelved pretty indefinitely. Like, we'll see what happens down the line. But, like, I just said, look, like, let's meet up and just fucking talk. And let's, like, like actually look out for each other rather yeah. than trying to make it fucking content. Because, like, I want to actually be there for you. I don't yeah. want to come in and, like, just paper over the cracks. Like, so it was a shame because I was really enjoying it. Um, and I'm I, this is the first time I've been podcastless in four years. Um, There'll be something like, surely in the pipeline, though. Well, there is. I'm just trying to work out. Because actually, with the big break from stand up, I think it gave me a lot of perspective on what I wanted to do with stand up. And it was you could do a thing. classical music podcast. Well, I've debated <laughs> this. I've started doing a fucking radio show about like yes. with comedians talking about their like their their like musical fandoms, like first gig, best gig, worst gig that you've attended, and then like like who who was the first band you're a proper fan of? Who you listening to now that more people want to like get involved with? So I got commissioned for six episodes of that on this online radio show, which has been class. I've really That's really class. enjoyed that. So hopefully I'll be I'll get fucking extended on that, um, and that'll become a thing because it's like listen, it's basically a fucking podcast. You can listen back to it online. You can do Perfect. it. It's just not on the podcast app. Yeah, and that's the problem. I would do that as a podcast, but you can't put the fucking music in. Of course, yeah, you gotta get, you gotta so get. Pulled. I need yeah, someone yeah. to pay the PRS on all this <laughs> stuff. So it's just a ball. Like I, as always, like I would do, and it was so funny when I started working with this company, like doing like the online radio show. Like I, they like booked me to do it. I like recorded the first episode, sent it over, and I made a logo and I made all the promo materials for it, and I sent them over. I was like, "Here's the, all this stuff," and they were like, "Oh no, we, like we'll wave a brand, wave a this, wave a brand, like, this guy." <laughs> And I was just so used to like that absolute Colin Geddes thing of like, I'll do it my fucking self. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, which is good, but it was, it's, it's interesting. Like, and it was the same with the app stock. Like when it first started, I was like, can I like sit with you in the editing room? Yep. And he was like, if you want, but like, why? And I've just gotten so used to like complete creative control. And I've just realized like, that's what people pay you for. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. they're paying you for your talent, but on my side, it feels like what you're actually paying me for is to sacrifice a little bit of something creatively to you. Yes. And yeah. that's what the money's for. Like whether it's in the app job, they'd cut out a couple of jokes every week. And I knew they would. So I always wrote two or three jokes that I knew wouldn't get in. So that I could slip in ones that I actually wanted to. You're get creating in. snags. That's what you do. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah, they go yeah. over with the snag list, they go, "Oh, look, glaringly obvious one that has to come out." You're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah whereas there's one just after. It's like, Whoop. "Oh, you have to." Yeah, that, and that killed me a few times. I remember a few uh, first TV show I was ever on. I started helping a bloke lift like a lighting, and he's like, "What of the course. fuck are you doing?" I went, "What?" I said, "Sure, between scenes, I've nothing to do, smoking fags." He went, "Well, you can fuck off. Uh, my job." Oh, it's interesting as well. I remember I was on youth orchestra tour in um, Italy, and it was like we were playing as part of this festival, and all the festival techie and stage like hand guys were like lugging all this stuff. And the manager said to us, because normally we'd like go in and out, and we had like a little van loading team of like fucking teenage boys like trying to lift all the fucking stuff. Yeah, but um, he was like, "Do not help them because they're so harshly unionized that they will just down tools." 
they will just stop working. That's brilliant. Yeah. And it's fucking class because they're yeah. all getting paid for the hours that they're doing and they need all the work to be done by them. Otherwise, blah, 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 and yeah. fucking fair play to them. Like, but it is that thing of like, just, just get me fucking involved. But you get yeah. people who are dead, like dead comfortable with just sitting back and going, oh, sure, someone else will do that. Oh, I know. And, and, and I, this, go, oh. I yeah, I've had to have I, my knuckles wrapped. It was, we were, we were, um, I did a one man play a couple, the year before last. Was that the um, caveman? Uh, yeah, defending the caveman. Of the caveman. Yeah, because I, I was so I, I messaged into Gaddis's podcast when you were on, being like, "Is there a fucking script you can get fucking somewhere?" Yeah, no. Because I'd love to just it's even read it. Tight as a fucking drum. What's tight. going on there? It's, it's so your, your man still. Your man that wrote it still has creative. He has creative control over it, and yeah. it's 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 least. It's basically leased by a guy from Iceland who has everywhere else in the world bar America. And yeah. then every place he say he, he gave it to me like two months beforehand and said, have at it because it's obviously American written. They won't fit. Mm-hmm. So I fucking shredded it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the spine of it was there, but I shredded it and sent it back. And, went, and it, it then he had to, he was traveling to America and he physically brought it with him, sat down for eight hours with your man. And they had me on the call as well. And they were like, why is this funny? I don't. And I said, no, trust me. Yeah. Irish audiences won't. They won't yeah. want that telegraph bullshit like where you see yeah. this big, you know, and they they left it off and the, the play became mine then, you know, but no, they yeah. weren't, they weren't, they just weren't fucking touching it. They, and that's the thing because you're, it's such a moneymaker, such a heavy, heavy moneymaker. Yeah. Jamam will not let it out. Like, fuck knows what Oscar from Iceland is paying this guy every year because oh he's God. had it in 40 odd countries. Oh so, fuck knows what he's paying. But, but it was funny when there was a couple of props, like there was a sofa and a, a door frame and a couple more things, you mm. know. And I literally into the back of the van one day. I was like, well, the first day after we were being te- or they were bringing him into the rehearsal space. I went, sure, hand that to me. And like, I got fucking chewed out of it. No, nope, you fucking. I said, I'm stronger than all you cunts for starts. <laughs> Just pass me that fucking thing. He went, you put one. We put too much fucking money into this. If you bust the fucking finger. I, or yeah. bust the shoulder. I can't. So you have to, for the next two weeks, be wrapping yourself in cotton wool. I can't have it. It's simple as that. It's That's it's not that we mean. like you or we care for you, but there is money down if you fucking become immobile. That's them fucking gay builders I was talking about. This is it. This is it. I was like, fuck, all right, fair enough. So before we go, what's, what's next? Because you are so dynamic. There's always fucking, you're always banging out class amounts of fucking clips and everything not like your instagram is flying it because you're back it's gigging now of course man, as well it's yeah, great yeah. Um, um where's well, the best place just uh, basically just instagram is is the best place to get all the stuff like i tweet fairly incessantly just like joke premises and some of them do well and all but i think it's just a good place to just get ideas out and kind yeah. of get a feel for stuff and it keeps my brain going um, but Instagram at Vittorio Angeloni, which none of you will fucking. I'll put it in there. I'll put it in the show in, notes. I guarantee just... it. I, I I couldn't believe it. I'd actually because I I'm a freak. I have to make lists of what's mm. happening, and I I couldn't believe it. I wrote your name without looking it up, and I oh. when I went I was just because I was looking beforehand because I like to make a poster. I was looking mm-hmm. for good pictures of you before I went. I spelled that absolutely correctly. <laughs> I and I'm an idiot. I can't spell it. And I spell it. Well, it is when you like it's it, very it is phonetic, exactly as it know, sounds. It just, yeah. So it does the job. The problem is on Instagram, I'm occasionally shadow banned, um, which means you have to type my full tag ah. to find me. Right. And right. It's, it's from the roasts because the algorithm goes that's cyberbullying, and I go yes, but they asked it's for consensual. it. <laughs> it's consensual. It's consensual. They wanted to be virtually fucking beaten up. Like, come on. Well, Vittorio, this has been an absolute pleasure. I it's I feel now like man. I gotta go off and fucking do some swimming in a lake or something. Although I don't, I'm, I'm in the country, man. I don't. Temporary? Every... Is there a coast? There is a coast. No, temporary. there's not. No, no, no. There, is it one of the six? I was talking it's, to someone from Monaghan today. It's the biggest inland county. All we have is is big ass lakes, mon- monstrous lakes. So I yeah. prefer lakes as well. I don't like the saltiness. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I like that nobody goes to lakes. That's the one yes. thing that freaks me out about beaches. Like I, long before there was ever COVID, my brain would want to melt down as soon as I look at. Why, why, how can you enjoy this? Yeah, it's stinking. Stinking. Go to a lake. 
there's actually yeah. some proper grass to sit on the edges, none of that fucking grainy gravel to stick oh, up your fucking, hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's just you at the lake. Nobody it's else. Beautiful. Nobody yeah, else. Yeah, me and my girlfriend went through a river in the north of England and just like just clambered over a few rocks, jumped in, had a wee swim. No no one for miles around. I was just like, this is class. Yeah. So oh, lovely. The fucking people, uh, the only people needed to see is like fucking fishermen and sh- sea shanty fucking people. Leave that to them. <laughs> I'm a fucking, I'm in a shanty band now as well. Stop the fucking lights. Are you? Well, I was in one, I've been in one for fucking years, but obviously. Of course, you were way before it was cool. Yeah. Quite, literally, fuck sakes. And I, I say, I messaged the fucking guy that runs it and went, here, are we making a video or what? Absolutely. <laughs> and we couldn't get it together because he was in Germany. It was all fucking thing. But we're putting on a gig in, in King's Cross in London. And, and and he said, will we do that fucking Wellerman song? And I was uh, like, of course we fucking will. Yes. Open. Are you that. daft? Yeah, like, open with that. <laughs> what yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. We can't not do it. You should try and make sea shanties of regular songs. You know what I mean? Fuck We've up done other... that. Oh, We've done, we did. Like we used to do like Mr. Brightside and all. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because I, I like, I sing a couple, I play like percussion in it mostly, but I sing a couple of them. And one of the ones I sing is Fields of Ath and Rye because we like weave in all sorts of different bits and bobs from the same kind of ilk. And it was funny, like every time we do it, he said, now you're not to sing the in-between bit. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Chuck your car off. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I fucking brilliant. What's the name of the band? I had no idea you were at Sea Shanty. The, the Mead Men. The, brilliant called. very good the tagline is drinkers with a singing problem oh that's that's so arty i love it so good i want to wear a fucking a turtleneck while watching that <laughs> just it's rowdy like we, we do like the band and the main guy will like get people out of the audience and do we like to drink with whatever their name is and make oh, them brilliant. Their drinks and it's a proper like party ah, atmosphere good it's good, good good brilliant mm. well man this has been an absolute joy thank you very very much that's uh, for having me. i'll put everything belong to you down in the show notes so people can find you even if you have been shadow banned and if you want to get yourself absolutely fucking obliterated on a Sunday by <laughs> Vittorio <laughs> just get on it get on it hour you want as a nice birthday present get one of your friends fucking roasted well I did a, I did a stag I did a stag too recently oh I fantastic all 21 of them <laughs> and it was class it was so because because the groom sent me like a wee bio of all of them oh perfect and Perfect. I was like, fucking just turn them to shreds. <laughs> Man, it's been great. Thanks a million. No worries. And my thanks again to Vittorio. What an absolute legend. What a lovely, lovely chat that was. Like he said, follow him on all the usual platforms. Instagram's probably the best. Uh, if you look down the show notes, I've put his link in there. So just uh, shoot on through. He's back gigging. I didn't point out my jealousy through the, <laughs> through the whole call. But yeah, he's back gigging which I hope to be doing myself. You know the crack, everybody. Rate and review the usual story. I will, of course, when we hit the 200 episodes, there'll be a big prize going out to top commenter, whoever it is. So whatever platform you can do that on, go ahead, do it. Send me a screen grab of it and tag me on Instagram. It's the best place because a lot of times I don't get to fucking see him. If you can't, you know the crack at this stage, just do a screen grab of you, listen to it, write something cool, and you go on the hat as well for the 200th episode top commenter award. Yeah, there you have it. So, Patreons, assemble this Sunday night at 9pm. We will be having a right old session. So, for the live Royal Ramble, won't be recorded. The crack will be 90. So, if you're not a Patreon and you want to watch the video of today's uh, episode, as well as a ton more, go become a Patreon. You get all the ad-free content and you get things like the Ramble Pod, which is now exclusive as of next week. It's going to be exclusive to... Patreons only, as well as that, you get the ad-free content, you get all the videos, and you get to come to the live Royal Rambles. Well, I can do no more for you, lads. That is that. Now, go on away, enjoy the rest of the weekend, and I'll talk to you with Jerry on Monday. Good night, good blessing, thanks. <laughs>